All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's on the Power. So in this video, I wanted to discuss the pros and cons of natural bodybuilding within pro bodybuilding, so drug-tested pro shows, and also the ability for drug-tested athletes to compete in open pro shows. So the biggest story related to this was a story I talked about a few weeks ago on my channel, which is the Ben Weider Natural Championship. So the Ben Weider Natural Championships is a big deal in the NPC and the IFBB. It's the first ever competition of its kind with a pro-am drug-tested show on Friday and Saturday. And some more information has come out about it, so I wanted to update you guys on that. So we do know now that this show is not going to be an Olympia qualifier. So winning the show will not qualify you for the Olympia, and there will be no Olympia points awarded at least this year in the professional version of this championship. So I think it's really one of those things where they want to see how successful this event is going to be run and really get a gauge for the quality of competitors that are competing here. Now, we also know that the only drug testing they will be doing is urinalysis. So basically peeing in a cup, there will be no blood testing, there will be no polygraph test, there will be no hair follicle test. It will be a urinalysis tested show. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll a clip here of Gary Udit, who is one of the promoters of this show, talking about some of the things that are gonna be happening in this show. Um, and I'm gonna roll that clip right now. Okay, so Gary, there's been a lot of buzz the last week and a half I've seen all across the social media about this uh, new contest that you and Ron Heche, the promoter of the IFBB Toronto Pro Super Show, are putting on up in uh, Canada. It's a uh, IFBB Pro League Pro Qualifier and also a pro contest, but the big buzz is that it's a natural show. So give us a little background on this. What's going on? It's something that Ron Heche and I have been talking about for some time. And um, he's got a big natural following up there. I do a lot of natural shows here in the U.S. And looking for somewhere else for those competitors to go to after these regional events, frankly. So uh, we put it together and spoke with uh, JM and Jim and Tyler about possibilities. Got the approval. It's going to be a natural pro qualifier uh, on Friday and a natural pro show on Saturday. Uh, we're holding it in Montreal, home of Ben Weider. Yeah. And now, now one thing I've been asked about is Olympia points for the pro. Tell us what's going on there. Uh, the first year will not. You know, we're hoping and expecting a big draw for this. But first year out, there won't be any Olympia points attached to this. I think it's the kind of thing where we've got to prove that this thing is going to be as slamming as we think it'll be. Uh, and then it's something we'll re uh, take another look at next year. Is there a specific website where people can go besides NBC News Online to get more information? Everything on? will be up and running probably by Friday of this week. And uh, they can go to my website, GaryUda.com. They'll be able to go to the CPA website also. Um, the, the contest is going to be uh, tested by your analysis, no polygraph. And this thing has nothing to do with the uh, Olympics or the IOC. IOC. Uh, this is a standalone natural event. So the Ben Weider Natural Classic is just one of the reasons for this topic of video. Um, you know, keep in mind, this is the IFBB Pro League and the NPC. Now, in addition to the IFBB Pro League, there is the IFBB Elite Pro, ran by Rafael Santoja, which basically encompasses many of the other countries um, that are not here in North America. So as you guys might remember, maybe a year or two ago, there was a split between the IFBB Pro League and the IFBB Elite Pro. So they are now two completely separate organizations and two completely separate entities. So the other reason for this conversation in the video is that the IFBB Elite Pro apparently is looking to start drug testing its own professional bodybuilders. Now, this story comes specifically out of South Africa, which is under the jurisdiction of the IFBB Elite Pro. And there was a story ran on the news there in South Africa about Marius Doan, um, who's a former professional bodybuilder who ended up having kidney failure. And in that video, they talk about how South Africa bodybuilding is cracking down on drug testing its bodybuilders. Um, so that would specifically be in reference to the IFBB Elite Pro. So I saw a lot of interesting Instagram posts about this crackdown in IFBB Elite Pro. And it seems the fear amongst competitors who are competing in the Elite Pro organization is that they're going to be trying to drug test all of the pros. Not just holding isolated shows like they're doing in the IFBB over here, like the isolated Ben Weider Natural Pro, but they're going to be having drug testing throughout the pro ranks in entire regions and possibly the entire IFBB Elite Pro. So the topic of discussion in this video was specifically going to be about whether or not professional bodybuilding can incorporate natural bodybuilding and how it can do that successfully. 
or can it do that successfully? So I'm going to go ahead and roll that news video for you guys here to give you guys some context of what exactly we're talking about. Report by Ronald Masinda. We delve deeper into the good, bad and ugly side of South African bodybuilding. Eventually in 2017, March, I completely lost the function of my kidneys. I felt it was unfair that it happened to me and it doesn't happen to other people. Marius Stone's life will never be the same again. The once robust man has been diagnosed with kidney failure. Although he doesn't want to go into great detail about the main cause of his health problems, he has offered future star bodybuilders some valuable advice. I don't believe it's just in South Africa and I don't believe it's just in bodybuilding. I think it's uh, much more widespread than that. But there's definitely um, a lot of youngsters, older people that use anabolic steroids, definitely. Look, supplements, um, people always um, think supplements is a, is a must-have, right? It's, it's, much more, um, uh, it's much more valuable to the body to have whole foods. Some people love to train on pre-workouts. We don't really train on pre-workouts too much or ever um, because it's not good for the kidneys. Um, we'll have like black coffee. Guys out there that only see money out of it. They just want to make money. They can't care what damage they do to a, a youngster's heart. Or his, or his body or his future as, as, being a, as being a parent, that is really important to me. Bodybuilding South Africa says it's had enough. According to the SA Institute for Drug Free Sport, 14 bodybuilders tested positive for banned substances after the 2018 annual report was released. Unscrupulous bodybuilding competitions also seem to be at the root of the doping problem. I mean, you can go onto any type of platform now, onto a, a social media platform, and you'll see that there's organizations and bodies advocating the fact that they allow athletes to come and, uh, and compete using steroids. We as a federation um, has the endeavor to try to eradicate specific anabolic steroids from our sport. And one way of doing this is bringing athletes through the system with the medical commission's assistance and help and, and information education programs and have them then perform at national, international levels, um, compete there and win, place well and not test positive. Despite the many difficulties faced by bodybuilders, the sport seems to be thriving. Three, six, seven. From the only classic Africa named after world-renowned actor-turned-politician Arnold Schwarzenegger, sees a plethora of talent compete in South Africa annually. Yeah, I know it's, uh, it will be a tough one because I'll be in the pro lineup. I'll be competing because I turned pro last year. But I'm looking forward to do it to represent uh, South Africa so that I can win to also show them that they can do it also, the young ones who are coming after me. Besides the Arnold, last year, we ran an event called the Gentle Zine Classic, which paid out one million rand cash prize money to the winners. And now, never before, I mean, there's a lot of sport, they don't even see that type of money paid out. Never, never uh, in the bodybuilding community. Bodybuilding South Africa says the sport is on the right path. But the road to a drug-free sport will continue hitting stumbling blocks if the rest of the bodybuilding community continues to ignore the dangers and irreparable damage caused by doping. All right, so that was the news video. So now we have both professional bodybuilding organizations, basically the two biggest in the world, cracking down on drugs in two very different ways. Now, assuming the IFBB Elite Pro is trying to do some kind of umbrella drug testing policy, we're going to compare that to the policy that the IFBB um, is, is incorporating here. Now, I think the way that the IFBB doing it is the right way to do it. I don't think there's really any feasible way to drug test the entire IFBB and drug test it fairly um, because if you had all these guys failing the drug test, you would have nobody at the Olympia. None of the big names that you're familiar with now um, would be competing. Everyone would basically be gone and it would be a clean slate. If the drug testing was legitimate and strict, basically everybody would be gone and the IFBB would essentially be forced to start over completely. 
Now, what they are doing is having an isolated natural show, and I think that's the way to do it, um, is to not only give these amateur competitors who are natural the opportunity to earn that title of IFBB Pro and then compete against IFBB Pros, but also giving them a natural show to compete in once they turn pro. So these guys will be given regular IFBB Pro cards, and they could go compete in regular IFBB shows, but in addition to that, there will also be natural shows for them to compete in in the IFBB, which I think is a fantastic way of doing it. So I think the biggest positive in creating drug testing in professional bodybuilding is the opportunity that's going to be given to these natural guys. Now, the other argument in favor of adding drug testing to professional bodybuilding, but not all of professional bodybuilding, would be I think that having more drug tested shows is going to lead to less drugs in the sport. Now, of course, there's always going to be some people that cheat and some people that cheat the drug tests um, and slip through the cracks here and there. And I don't think that's really something that can be avoided no matter what. But I do think in the general sense, the more drug tested opportunities to compete that you have, the more drug free athletes that you will have actually competing. I do think there's going to be a large percentage of people here that are not trying to lie. They're not trying to cheat. They just want a place to compete naturally. And now they have that opportunity and they also have the opportunity to earn a pro card while doing so. So those are the two biggest pros that I have is number one, the opportunity given to natural competitors. Um, and number two, more testing to me equals overall less drugs. Now the negatives, the biggest negative to me is going to be unfairness. I do think there will be some people that try to cheat these tests and there will be what we call fake natties competing at these shows. I think that's certainly something that's going to happen. I think it's unavoidable. Um, I think the innate desire to cheat in competitions like this is always going to be there. Um, and it's something that just can't be fixed. It happens in natural bodybuilding shows around the world in various organizations. Um, and I think the IFBB and NPC will be no exception to that rule. So the biggest downside to me would be the unfairness of somebody potentially cheating on these drug tests um, and not being a natural bodybuilder, but still earning the title of a natural competitor by winning one of these natural shows unfairly. However, that's why I argue that having these isolated natural shows is a better idea than trying to drug test the entire organization. Because if you drug test the entire organization, the entire organization is going to try to cheat those drug tests. And it's basically going to be one giant lie. I think by having one isolated show or multiple isolated shows, but still having the IFBB itself not be drug tested, it's going to give the people who really want to use drugs and really push those limits the opportunity to still compete in the IFBB. And it's going to give the people who don't want to push those limits a place to compete in the IFBB as well. You have two separate you know, areas for them to compete, really. If you try to drug test everybody, I think that's where things are going to get a little bit sticky. So do I think drug testing and professional bodybuilding can work? I think the answer to that question is yes, and I think the way the IFBB Pro League is doing it is the best way to do it. Do I think if an organization like the IFBB Elite Pro decides to drug test their entire um, group of pro bodybuilders, that would be a good thing? Probably not. That's probably not going to end well. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think drug testing can work in professional bodybuilding? And if so, under what circumstances do you think it would be successful? What type of drug test do you think would be successful? What should, what should they test for? Um, you know, what should be banned, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you guys for watching the video and please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.